In this third screencast, I'm going to discuss collision theory. And this comes from the kinetic theory of gases, which was the subject of the previous screencast. And the idea is that we can predict the frequency of collisions between particles based on what kinetic theory tells us about their average properties and distribution. The basic premise is that since molecules have to collide in order to react, the rate of collision should be directly related to the rate of reaction. So we can make predictions about rate coefficients. You can see Houston section 1.7 for more information. But the basic idea is that we can imagine that we have got two molecules of mass M1 and M2, and they are hard spheres. Their hard sphere radii are R1 and R2, respectively. And so the distance of closest approach is given by the sum of those radii. So for example, if molecule 1 is in the center and it has a radius of R1, the closest that molecule 2 can get, because these are hard spheres, is the sum of their radii from the center of mass to the center of mass. So, and this is also if we have equal sized molecules, this would be the same as their diameter, or you can consider it to be the average value of the diameter of the two particles. Um, okay, so that's, that's defining that term B max, which is the distance of closest approach. And now the derivation of the collision frequency is just based on the idea that we take one particle which sits inside of this little cylinder, and it traverses a certain volume over a certain time. So this is a molecule of type 1, and we want to know how far it travels over a certain time interval. And in order to do this, we just consider the average relative velocity of the two types of molecules, and we'll call that average V sub R. And we want to know how, many, how often this molecule of type 1 is going to collide with molecules of type 2 per unit of time. And so to do that, we consider that this molecule is going to sweep out a cylinder whose radius is given by B max. So this radius is B max. And the area of that cylinder then is pi times B max squared, which is given here. And then the length that's traversed over time interval delta t is just given by the average, velo average relative velocity times delta t. So that gives us the size of the cylinder. So its volume is just given by the product of its area times that, um, that length. And then we want to know the average number of collisions possible per unit of time per unit of area. So we take this area times the average relative velocity times delta t. I guess I got to the edge of the slide. And we divide that by delta t. So basically, the delta t's cancel each other out. Ah. And um, so that gives us the uh, average volume that's swept out by these particles. And if we multiply that by the concentration, the number of molecules of type 2 per unit of volume, that should tell us the number of collisions on average that we would expect over time interval delta t. And that's Z2. So that is the, the frequency of collisions of this one particle of type 1 with all particles of type 2. So that's given by pi times B max squared times the average relative velocity times the concentration of molecules of type 2 per unit of volume. And then the next part of it is just we want to know the total number of collisions between in the system between particles of type 1 and particles of type 2. So we need to multiply by the concentration of these particles because I was only considering one when I derive this number, Z2. So that gives me Z12, which is the frequency of collisions between particles of type 1 and particles of type 2. So that's given by pi B max squared times the average relative velocity times the products of the concentrations of each of the particles. And this is the number of molecules per unit of volume of the system. So that, that's really all there is to it, to get basic collision frequencies. Now. We need a value for the average relative velocity. And we can show, and I've actually got a link here, but um, you can show that if molecules have an average relative velocity, or sorry, an average velocity given by this average V, which we know from kinetic theory, the average relative velocity of two molecules is given by the square root of 2 times that average velocity. So based on that, we can insert an expression. Well, we can put in the square root of 2 multiplied by the average velocity of the system. And because we have molecules of two types, we use the reduced mass of the system instead of just the mass of one particle. 
And that gives us pi b max squared times the square root of 8 kbt over pi times mu times n1 star times n2 star. Mu is the reduced mass. We already talked about this in class, but it's the product of the masses over the sum of the masses of the two particles. If we only need to consider one type of particle, we, have, we multiply this by one half to avoid overcounting collisions, because otherwise we'd count collisions between one and particles of type one twice. So these are the expressions for the average number of collisions per unit of time, per unit of volume, for these systems based on basic collision theory. And that's all there is to it. So as an example, if we want to find the collision rate of NO with O3 at 300 Kelvin, a pressure of one atmosphere, and at a concentration of 0.2 ppm, the molecular diameter diameters are given 0.3 and 0.375 nanometers. Um, sorry, those should be radii. That's the only thing that makes sense according to what happens later in the problem. Um, so in order to make that calculation, it, we just apply the formula that we have. So we've got the rate of collisions between different molecules being pi b max squared times all these quantities. The concentrations need to be expressed as molecules per volume. So we take the parts per million and we multiply by the volume in Avogadro's number in order to get the number of molecules per liter. Or sorry, this is the inverse of the volume. So we get 4.9 times 10 to the 15th molecules per liter. B max is the sum of the radii of the particles. So that's 0.675 nanometers. And so mu can be calculated based on just our identity. Um, for NO, I think it's 48. And for oxygen, that's probably backwards. For O3, it's 48. And for NO, it's 30 grams per mole. So I'm taking their product divided by the sum of those two numbers. And then in order to get it in terms of just kilograms for one molecule, I divide by Avogadro's number. And there's 1,000 grams in a kilogram. So I get about 3 times 10 to the negative 26th kilogram, being the reduced mass. And inserting all those numbers gives me a value of about 5 times 10 to the 21st collisions per cubic meter per second. If I like molar units, that's about 0 0.0083 moles per cubic meter per second. So that gives you a sense of the order of magnitude of the collisions that are predicted. Now one complication is that not every collision is going to result in a reaction. So I'll leave this for the next set of notes.